What I'm about to introduce, and I'm going to start to share some things over the next five, six, I don't know how many weeks, how long it takes. In many cases, it may be taboo. It may be controversial. But what I'm going to share this morning is just scratching the surface of something that I believe needs to have room to be able to embrace, to be able to think out of the box. When you go to school, they give you coloring in books. And it may be a, a horse, it may be a house, it may be this, and you color between the lines. And every time you color, no matter what you color, it will always be what that picture shows you. It'll either be a house or it'll be a horse or it'll be something. But I believe what God wants is to paint a tapestry. And the only way that you can do that is to color in outside the lines. And a lot of us have set boundaries around our lives. We've spoken words over our lives. We've said certain things and we are victims basically of our own talking or our own thinking. And I believe that God wants to break the mold. He wants to smash down some walls that the church of the living God that He wants to lead will become the church that He wants. Amen. And a lot of times we've been painted a picture of what the church is and we've just continued to color in between the lines. But I believe that God's going to break that. I believe that God wants to change some things. You see, all across the world, multitudes, both Christians and non-Christians, are crying out for change. They're looking for change. They're looking for things to change. They think sometimes a change of government, or a change of this, or a change of jobs, or a, or a change of husbands, or wives, or whatever it might be, that might be the answer. But they're crying out for change. Change that will break the helplessness that people find themselves in. How many people believe today there's so many people that today that are it's just helpless around their lives? They don't know whether they're coming or going. Find themselves either in debt, sickness, family problems, poverty, goodness knows what. Some are look, just looking for something to fix it a way out. But I also believe that there is a multitude beginning to rise out and to cry out for the reality of Jesus Christ. Amen? There's a multitude. There's a stirring. There's a discomfort. There's a I don't know how to explain it, but there's something that's only the Holy Spirit can do on the inside of us. And if we work with the Holy Ghost, I believe that He will reveal His purpose. And I believe that the church that we know today, we would not even recognize it because of the changes that God's going to make. Many today are disillusioned with the church as a form of godliness but no power. But I believe that God, there's many that are seeking a God who is true to His Word. How many people believe that God is true to His Word? A God of power, a God of signs and wonders. The church was designed by God to be a glorious church, a powerful church. In Acts 1.8, the Bible says, And you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You shall receive power, the Bible says. Power. Wonder-working power. I believe that God wants an awesome church. The church is to move in signs and wonders and miracles. How many people believe that? I'm just going to read this to you so that we can 
catch the whole gist of it. It's found in the book of Mark. We all know it so well. But, you know, sometimes you've got to read it and look at it and see it again and again and again and again. And it says in Mark chapter 16, uh, verse 17, and it says, And these signs will follow those who believe. Give me a wave if you're a believer. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you believe that today? These signs will follow them that believe. You know, in Acts chapter 2, let me just read this to you as well, as I'm going to get launched in a minute. <laughs> Acts chapter 2, we all know it again, but sometimes it's good to read it and read it and read it. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Everybody say, how many flesh? All flesh. How many people know what the Greek and Hebrew mean, word means? All. I mean, a very, very simple little word. But I believe it's all. It's all consuming. It's everything. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Listen to this. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. I believe that this is a spiritual walk. We're not walking in the flesh. God wants us to get into the realm of the spirit. He wants us to abandon our natural thinking and enter into the realm of the spirit. Go for God. Go into there. Your young men shall... I see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servant and on my main, main servant, I will pour out my spirit in these days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord." And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, I'm asking you today to come in with a mighty gushing wind. I'm asking you today, my God, that you will blast through, that you will break through the unbelief, the hardness of our hearts, that you will take over, my God, our lives, that we will surrender to you, that we will give you everything that we are, my God, we will give you ourselves and we will allow you to stir up that which has been put on the inside of us, the hidden giftings, the hidden truths, the hidden anointings, everything that we are, that, that you want, that we are created for. Father, we take authority over every lie, every negative force that comes into the minds of men and women that stops them from entering in. And my God, I pray today that as I share this word that you've put into my heart, I pray, my God, that it will be like a hammer, that it will break, it will smash through, it will cause the walls to come crumbling down. And I pray that out of the ashes and out of the dust, we will emerge as a church, that the church of the living God will rise over Australia. And Father, we will give you all the praise and we will give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We, and I don't know, there's a spirit of boldness that I believe has got to come into the church. Last Tuesday night at the, at, at the prayer meeting, we started to say that we were going to make a decree because we'd heard on the news that the government and the council and the, and the police and everybody had no answer for the carnage that was happening on our roads. I believe that there was 19 people uh, died on our roads in a week. And we stood there on Tuesday night and we decreed and we declared. And I want to tell you, as I was doing that, it was like that the devil was throwing everything he could at me. What are you going to do if it doesn't work? What are you going to do? I was thinking, what are you going to do if it does? <laughs> and we decreed and we said there will be no more carnage, there will be no more death on our roads. How many people were there at that prayer meeting? And I want to tell you, to my knowledge, there's been no deaths this week. Somewhere along the line, we've got to start up, stand up, and we've got to start to decree, and we've got to declare what God says. And I want to tell you what God says is truth, 
and he's looking for a bunch of people that are going to be bold and stand in the gap and make declarations. And I want to say today that there will be a move of God on the Sunshine Coast. There will be an outpouring of God's Spirit over the church. There will come change over the church. I decree it in Jesus' name. I will not be the same next week as I am this week. And I pray that you will not be the same next week. I pray that the week after that we will change even more and we'll keep changing and changing and changing until we take on that which God wants us to take on. We are the head and we are not the tail. We are the overcomers, amen. We are not overcome. We are the triumphant ones. We are the rulers and reigners in Jesus' name. Do you believe that today? I believe that the church has got a destiny. The early church displayed the power, the authority. He took, they took it to the then known world and shook it by the reality of God. How many people believe the Sunshine Coast needs a shake? Today, there's so many different things that are happening in the church. Because we're body, soul, and spirit, we need to be both social and spiritual. It's when the social, worldly body overtakes the spiritual body, we lose our power. I love a good joke. I love life. I love to catch a fish. I love to be social. I love to have fellowship. But I want to tell you, there's nothing, there's nothing better than on Tuesday nights getting in the presence of God. There's nothing better driving your car and you begin to sing in the Spirit and the Spirit of God fills your car. Nothing like when you're opening up the Word and the Word of God becomes alive and starts to talk to you. There's nothing better than that, amen. There's nothing better. I love fellowship. But I want to tell you, when the Holy Ghost gets around me, I just want God. I just want God. I just want to get into His presence and, and allow Him to touch me. We lose the power and the anointing. Really, we are spirit. And a spirit man, man has to be fed. He's got to be fed spiritual food, not social food. Need to move in the anointing and the power of God. If there is a lack of anointing in the church, you need more cake and coffee. By the way, coffee and cake will be served <laughs> at the rear of the hall at the end of the service. I had to put that in there. I was so serious. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Because the church, that's us, has failed to portray and demonstrate the reality of this all-powerful God, multitudes have turned to the occult. Trying to fill the void. We are spirit. Every unsaved person out there is a spirit. And if they don't get filled with the Spirit of God, they will look for something else to fill it. It's because the church has not displayed the power of God. Multitudes are trying to fill that void. A lot of church people are scared of manifestations. We had beautiful people. People still love us. They still love us, but they, they couldn't handle people falling under the power. Didn't fit their theology. Didn't fit their thinking. I've got one answer why people fall over. Because they can't stand up. But to me... The time I got touched by God like that, it just had such an impact on my life. Something touched me of the supernatural. 
at, our, at the group of people that were, we met with a couple of weeks ago, 20-odd young people. There are leaders of the group there that have never, never really experienced the power of God, Pentecostal people. One of the leaders was there and just standing there. And as I was praying for her, I could feel the sort of resistance. And I, and I just whispered into her, my, into her ear and I said, I can't remember what I said. Hey, put your brain in neutral. Put your brain in neutral. And as I said that to her, she just fell under the power of God. And as she hit the floor, she just cried and cried and cried and the power of God just surging over her. You see, we are the blockage through our doctrines and our theologies and our thinkings. Somehow or other, we've got to trust God. Let God be God. Multitudes have turned to the occult. People are scared of the manifestations. I remember when we were over in Papua New Guinea, we had a move of the Spirit of God. People were crying, falling down. Some were laughing. Goodness knows what happened. We had, we had meetings over three nights. The meetings went from 400 to six to 8,000, they estimated in the last meeting, in three nights. People were being healed. People were being delivered. People were running around with crutches over their heads. People were getting saved. People were getting filled with the Spirit. And hardly anybody, to my knowledge, nobody was touching Him but the Holy Ghost. It was just the presence of God came down. And as the presence of God came down, people were just being healed, delivered. I don't know what miracles, I don't really know what went on. All I know is that it was a roar, of, just a roar. People running and crying and laughing and people just falling under the power of God, the anointing. How many people want the anointing? How many people are prepared to let go some stuff? Amen? Let go some things? Are you, how, come on, how many of you going? <laughs> I told you to see they fall down. <laughs> right on cue, Holy Ghost. Good thing. Come on, lift up your hands if you really want it. Come on, are you want prepared to change? You're prepared to change. Hallelujah. God's looking at you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We want to change. We want to see change. What we don't understand in the Bible, we put on the shelf. Maybe some other time. There's a lot of things I still don't understand. Before I go on, let me say this. The devil is only a counterfeiter. He is not a creator. He can only counterfeit. You cannot have a counterfeit $50 bill if there's not an original, it's no good creating a $3 bill. It can look beautiful and everything like that, but it's useless. But if you're going to counterfeit something, you've got to counterfeit the original. He is not a creator. He is a counterfeiter. The Lord is moving by His Spirit in a powerful way throughout the world. Unfortunately, much of the church has no knowledge of what the Lord is doing. In China, there is an amazing move of God. People love not their lives, they love the Lord. They know that the person that they witness to could dob them into the government, and if they do, they'll go to prison or even get killed. There was a man that I met in England called the Heavenly Man. A Chinese man that got born again, filled with the power of God, and almost got the whole prison converted. To keep him quiet, they broke his legs and they put him in shackles. 
his arms and his legs and everything. They broke his legs, then put him in shackles and they bound him up. He was laying in his prison cell and an angel of God appeared to him, spoke to him and said to him, Arise, just like Peter. And as he arose, his legs were totally healed. His shackles fell off. And they walked, he said he walked to the prison gate. And as he walked there, the, the, sorry, the prison door opened. Door after door, guards were asleep. He got to the main gate. The main gate opened. He walked out and there was a taxi waiting there for him. And he got in the taxi and drove away. He now lives somewhere in Germany, I believe. Had the privilege of meeting that man. Seekers of truth are having encounters with Jesus Christ. Friend, people are having encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me say it again. People are having encounters with Jesus Christ. It is not just a religious thing. People ha are having encounters with Jesus Christ. The truth. Jesus is the truth. Unusual manifestations are being reported across the world. Signs and wonders. Visitations of angels. Your heavenly man had a visitation from an angel. Jesus is showing himself. Jesus is turning up. He's walking into mosques. He's walking into, into Muslim people. He's walking around showing himself. Kenneth Hagen, as a 16-year-old boy, was laying on his deathbed full of TB, gasping for breath, had what they thought just days to live. And an angel of God, we heard a story similar last night. But an angel, Jesus himself rather, walked in and started to speak with Kenneth Hagen, talked with him, shared with him, told him what he wanted him to do, raised him up, totally healed him. That man became one of the greatest speakers I've ever heard. A man who knew the Holy Ghost. It sings like gold dust. When you talk about gold dust, a lot of religious or spiritual people turn their nose up. But I want to tell you, I've seen it. I've seen gold dust not falling. I haven't seen it, in a, but I've seen it on people's hands. I've had it on my own hands. I've seen it on my Bible. I've seen it. Friend, we've got to be careful what we throw out. God wants to move with signs and wonders and we are the blockage. I had great difficulty and I still have difficulty. But I saw a DVD of a, of a meeting somewhere in America. Thousands upon thousands, a massive meeting. People worshipping like I've never heard before. And worshipping the presence of Almighty God. Friend, I want to tell you, we've got to enter into something. And we're not just here singing songs. We've got to get our heart involved. We've got to let ourselves get into this. And as they were worshipping, and the presence of God, you could hear this music, the sounds, and, and it was like the, the angels of God. But all of a sudden, feathers started coming out of the sky. I thought, oh my God. Was there pigeons up in the roof? Molting pigeons. Stupid Christians think it's a manifestation of God. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Oh, Father, forgive us. Forgive us for being so stupid and natural. And you want us to be super spiritual and spiritual people. Precious stones. Amazing healings. People being raised from the dead. Wigglesworth raised people from the dead. Miracle supplies of food. You could go on and on and on. But you see, in all this, the question arises, is this God? When we had the church at Wombai, move of the Spirit of God and pineapple shed, Saw people saved, sometimes 20, 30 people saved, people coming out of the surf every Sunday night, Sunday morning, people being born again, people being filled. 
people being healed, people being touched by God. We used to sing, this is the day. We used to dance and we used to sing and we used to clap and we'd run around and the kids would all get in the front of the church and put their arms together and, and scissor dance across the thing. People would get up and run around the church. People would kneel or fall under the power of God, nobody touching them. We had a combined meeting with the Pentecostal church down the road. And we were, we were doing the worship and now people were doing their thing, what they do. And he came to me at the end of the meeting. And he, said, he said, what you have here is froth and bubble. What we have is deep and meaningful. And because I respected that man and I loved that man, that had an amazing impact on my life. Friend, you've got to be careful who you allow to speak into your life. If somebody accidentally gives you poison, your best friend, it'll still kill you. If they accidentally give you poison, it will still kill you. If they give you poison ignorantly, thinking it was something else, it will still kill you. That day, something died inside of me. But it took my wife, Nancy, to slap it out of me. So the question arises, is this God? Is any of this scriptural? Or is it the devil? The answer is simple. Yes, God can and is doing these things today. And yes, the devil is also counterfeiting, counterfeiting some of these miracles to draw people away from the truth. I believe that we are going to enter into something. In the book of Acts, chapter 5, it talks about people by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. And I believe that people who are manifesting what looks like spiritual things to gain self-recognition or self-importance, or whatever it might be, I believe the fire of God is going to come down like it did on Ananias and Sapphira. Because I don't believe that God is going to tolerate the junk for too much longer. Is it all right to talk like that? Because there's got to come a cleansing. There's got to come a change. There's got to come a, some sort of thing that's inside us that will change. As believers, we have access to the supernatural possibility in the Lord. Everything that God says we can do. Things that have not been explored through ignorance or fear or unbelief. We must be students of the Word. We must exercise godly discernment. Discernment is not judgment. Discernment is not judgment. It is rightly applying the Word of God to any given situation. In Hebrews 5.14, it says this, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That's not, not just old people. It means mature. Mature to those who are mature, that in those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I believe that God will help us as we grow up in Him to move in discernment and understanding and your spirit will know whether it's right or wrong. In the late... Uh, there's a woman that was born in the uh, 1844. She died in 1924. 
Her name was Maria Woodward Etta. She would go into a trance. A typical pose that she had was giving, given a one-way sign. Sometimes the Holy Spirit held her in that pose for hours. Never moved for hours. Do you understand why that happened? It's a sign and a wonder, isn't it? But this woman read, led crusades throughout the world and led literally hundreds of thousands of people to Christ. She had one finger pointed to heaven and the other hand uh, finger pointed to hell. One was, you going to heaven or you going to hell? She didn't have to say a word. She just stood there in this trance. As people saw and great conviction fell, had to make a choice, heaven or hell, multitude saved. Much as what we call discernment is judgment, based on our belief system. Regardless of what Scripture teaches, I want to just share some things. In the Word of God, there are things that happen that blow my mind. Rivers opened up that were in flood, and people walked through on dry land. Red Sea opened up. How amazing is that? Manna came down from heaven. Miracles. Peter, uh, when he was called to Cornelius' house, went into a trance. But one of the amazing things that happened is that while he was in that trance, he had a vision that was contrary to his belief system. His belief system held him bound. It was not lawful for a Jew to even fellowship with a Gentile, let alone go to their house and stay with them. It was contrary to their, his believing. Then all we saw this food coming down. And God said, kill and eat. He said, no way in the world am I going to do that. I don't believe that. You see... We, at this time, if God spoke to Peter, will he speak to the church today? Will, it, will he go past our belief system where we're in error? Will he, will he challenge things that, that are in our mind that stop us from entering in to the supernatural power of God? John didn't know if he was in his body or outside of his body. Oh, I'd love that. We heard last night of a woman that had a vision of somebody that she wanted to pray for and she felt that she went in the realm of the Spirit and laid hands on this person. Got it, whatever, a couple of days later to find out that that person was totally healed that only had days to live. Peter's shadow heal people. I'm, I'm trying to break some things in our thinking. Because if you think small, you're going to have a small God. If you just think small, that's all we're going to have. But if we think big, we can have a big God who can do whatever He says He can do. Peter's shadow heal people. We know it was God. We know that, but it was his shadow that touched people. People had faith and they laid people out in the street praying that the shadow would touch people. Jesus walked on water. Jesus walked through walls. These things that I do, you shall do also. Shaka <laughs> Now was Is Jesus a liar? Is he a liar? Is it possible? I, 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 I don't know. I don't have a need to walk through a wall at the moment. But <laughs> I 
I pray that... It... You with me? Philip was translated. Here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> to go in, you've got to have faith and an open heart and a mind. We've got to be able to get hold of God. So, I'll close with this. What can we do? Number one, get hungry for God's presence and get hungry for God's revival. Get hungry. Get into the Word of God. Get into the Word of God. Come and pray Tuesday nights. <laughs> that would help. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. Trust the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Well, next week it's going to get hotter. I want to tell you, I, what, I'm coming next week. <laughs> oh, holy gas. I am excited because I believe that there's a stirring. Had a word just recently. Uh, I think it was Ken spoke to me and I said something about the beginning had started uh, that month or something like that or next month. And while we were talking, he said, that's, that's this week. And something got inside me. Something got inside me, and I am determined to change. I am determined to change. Let us stand to our feet. God is a good God, amen. But friend, we can't just say God's going to do everything. He can, but he won't, because he wants to use us, the church. I will build my church that the gates of Hayes will not prevail against it.